This is Joel Sherman's column in the uh, recent column in the New York Post, how Major League Baseball could tweak rules to fix its offensive problem. Wow, you, you've got, you solved this then. Excellent. Oh, I like the lead. Major League Baseball has become Dave Kingman. I guess, Joel, we need to explain who was Dave King Kong Kingman to a younger audience. Yeah, I mean, he was an oddity in his day. He was a very big, uh, very thin power hitter, the three true outcomes of the 1970s. He walked, he struck out, he hit home runs, and his numbers almost completely mirror what the league averages are. Now, when I wrote this, I think it's 237 now, the sport was hitting 236. That was Dave Kingman's lifetime average. Wow. It was walking a little over 8% of the time. That's a major league average now. It was striking a little over 24% of the time. That's the major league average now. I just want to point out, it's like, he's hit, you saw him there at Shea Stadium. By the way, brutal place to hit home runs in the 70s and 80s. He hit 37 homers, led the league for the Mets at Shea Stadium 1982. He was an immense power hitter, but I am stunned because he was seen as the extreme of what you didn't want in baseball. And now, Joel, there are your numbers. This is Major League Baseball has become King Kong Kingman. Yeah, these are our numbers. We've been trending in this direction. And as one executive told me, I don't think we've hit bottom yet. He expects the strikeout rate to get up towards 30% the batting average not to be much better. Now, I will say this. We probably still need some patience. The May statistic slash line is significantly better than the April one. Really? Okay. Yes. We're up in each of the three batting average on base and slugging some percentage up to a low 700 OPS from a high 600 OPS in April. So maybe, you know, like always give players time to adapt to whatever the new new is, but the trend is not just April, May. We have been right. going in this yeah. direction for several years. You know what, what's funny is if you were in the early sabermetric set, which I was, I, I was always talking up. King Kong Kingman was even before my time. I was a kid in Little League watching him play. But by the time, I was always arguing Adam Dunn is an excellent player. Yeah. Adam, If you can hit 40 homers and walk 100 times, doesn't matter. Oh, you strike out. Oh, he clogs up the bases. Whatever. 100 walks, 40 homers. That's an, that's an elite player. But, Dan, that's before the whole league became Adam Dunn. And now the whole league has become King Kong Kingman. I think that's why I do essays on guys who hit for contact and can field because it's become yeah, this thing. the pendulum swung too far the other way. Right, right. Yeah. So you've got some solutions, don't you? Well, I tried. I, I went to things that, you know, so I thought I could back up a little statistically. Look, one, one, one of the realities is the analytics showed if you can dominate with a big fastball at the top of the zone, first of all, guys can't hit it, and then it opens the zone at the bottom for breaking balls lower. You know, I think my first thing would be the, the strike zone is between the shoulders and the belt buckle. And I think we need to bring it down to the belt buckle to see if we can get guys to be disciplined and say, I'm going to lay off of that high pitch, which I know looks good to them. I mean, just look at these numbers. If you're at the top of the zone, what the batting average and slugging is. And I think we need to think seriously because Unless we're going to do something tremendously radical and move the mound back, we right. have to have something that blunts velocity. Literally, I could show you a stat. For every mile of velocity starting at about 92, 93 miles per hour, every slash line, look at this. This is what happens. Like, guys throw hard. If we don't do something to blunt velocity, this is where we're heading. And as we know, with weighted balls and better, you know, using slow speed cameras to show guys how to be more efficient in their movement and their release point, the velocity is not going anyplace. People have private coaches from 10 years old up now to hunt velocity. All right. Um, show me where. Where is the zone and where do you want to bring it? Like, how, f how low can you bring the zone? So the strike zone, I think, by the rules, is the midpoint between shoulder and belt, mm -hmm. right? So we're kind of a little over the belly button. Can we bring it down a few inches, you know, to towards... The top end of the zone is where, though? How far down, like here? The, the top of the zone is, by rule, yeah. halfway between the shoulders and the belt. Okay. I think we have to drop a few inches there to see if guys could discipline themselves to lay off of that pitch because it's either going to be a ball... And, and yeah. what we do to create action then is pitchers have to come down. Right. Otherwise, they're right. going to fall behind and walk, guys. Well, I think if okay. we do not, because the velocity is so great, we must do something to blunt velocity. Yeah, I think you also bring up, um, and this is something that is we always say as an aside, because something is happening, and I don't blame teams, because it went from bullfrog, right? You can use some suntan stuff or something to give you a little a stickiness on the ball to, I think teams have devised their own stuff, right? And they're using their own concoctions to 
put amazing spin on the ball. The people who are passionate about this, who I spoke to, are extraordinarily passionate that if we don't do something, it's, we, again, we've learned the value of RPMs. Like if we can, you know, when guys are increasing by 200, 300, 400 RPMs on fastballs, breaking balls, it's helping with control. And if something isn't done, it's, it's steroids on the fingers. I, Brian, I want to say something. I am stayed away from writing about individual pitchers this year when I write columns as much as possible because I'm afraid that I'm going to write about somebody and then there's going to be like, well, somebody's going to call me and say, well, you know why so-and-so is so good. Mm -hmm. Like in the old days when they'd say, you know why so-and-so is hitting home <laughs> runs. It's a different and I, right. You know, right. and I'm like, do I need to be asking every pitcher and pitching coach now when there's a good performance? Hey, was that natural or not? And the comparison I'll make because – Somebody made it for me, and I used it in the column. Can you imagine tomorrow if a great hitter, and I don't want to use a name because it will damn it by right. whatever, but think of your great hitter. His bat explodes and a bunch of Super Bowls come rolling out. That, we'll do that for a week here, right? Because mm. it, it's loading up the bat. It's illegally doctoring the bat. Well, they're illegally doctoring the ball. But culturally, some of that is accepted. So weigh in on that. Because I, I'm waiting. i say, hey, wait, you can't do it. But if, unless you make it egregious, like on the hat or on your arm, no one is calling you on I think that's why they haven't been able to legislate it yet, because the ball is slick. And you don't want to create something that could cause, to the detriment of hitters, more hit by batters, which we're seeing at a ridiculous pace. Yep. Um, but there's no doubt. There's some, it's unnatural for play, pitchers to go from one season to the next <laughs> and increase their spin rates. And, and what's happening to the game, it's not – I mean, I could argue with Joel, it's not fastballs to me. The devastating pitch in the game has now turned into high velocity, high spin rate breaking balls. You can't mm -hmm. cover both things. And the right. unintended consequences of lowering the strikes, and Joel knows this because it would be increasing walks because we've got pitchers that can't throw strikes now. His third point of his article – No. I am all in on against what you want to do. But I am not, like, want to abbreviate it a little bit. We've got to eliminate the darn shift completely. Because what's happening, if you reward hitters for hitting the ball hard on the ground with a hit, they'll hit the ball hard on the ground with a hit. Believe me, BK, I didn't want to go here. I was not a big <laughs> believer. The unintended consequences, like, uh, okay, hitters, make an adjustment and hit the ball the other way. You know what? Can, they can't. Guys, can, sell, can sell me on because I'm, I'm, I'm dead against can, this. Can we put up the, the chart to show what happens when you hit a ball hard on the ground? Like, in other words, now we the, the analytic age has showed us what happens. From 2015 to 19, you hit a ball, you know, like what was an out then? Look at, look, the shifts have become so precise. Mm -hmm. Like, 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 Kevin Long, the hitting coach of the Nationals, I talked to him for this story. He said, you know, now you know, with my swing plane, these are the only places the ball can go on the ground. <laughs> right, right? Right? So, right. like, you could jam it. It's a zone defense. And in other sports, to create offense, we eliminate certain kind of defensive tactics. Okay. Like, like why can we not do Correct. that in baseball to promote the kind of and offense we like to see? Let me know the first time you talk to a fan that says – I'm going to miss the shift. Right. I'm with you. He misses. Like, we talk about length of play in our game, which I understand is an issue. I think it's more the lack of action in the length of the game. I don't even think we'd be talking about length of the game if we had more action. The best way to promote action is put more balls in play. Hitters will put more balls in play if they can get hits by hitting the ball on the ground. Brian, Brian, let, let me try one I'm more. I'm just sitting here hating the idea, yeah, by the way. They're just attacking. Yeah, go ahead. The <laughs> concept of offense hitting is to hit the ball hard. Uh -huh. And we are doing something now that is absolutely not rewarding players who hit the ball hard. You are encouraging them, I must try to hit the ball in the air. By the way, do you know what's going on in outfield defense? Everyone's playing their outfield deeper than ever before, mm -hmm. right? They're saying, good luck between the shift and a deep outfield. We're taking away doubles and triples. Right. Let's see, you either have to hit a home run to score it or somehow get the ball between those two places with a single three times to score a single run. So to me, if you don't do something to promote base hits, what kind of game are we moving towards? The, the, the smart guys have figured out where to put the defense. It's hurting the overall enjoyment of the game.